Okay, now I'm going to get into some commands that are a little bit more analytical uh, and will help you along through um, the analysis portion of the exercise. We'll start off just by looking at an object's properties. Um, and what you're seeing here are the ISO curves that are uh, kind of natural to the way that, that, that Rhino works as it builds surfaces. And if we hit F3, we can bring up its properties and we can decide to either show or not show those ISO curves and we can also adjust their density. Um, and I tend to keep mine off because uh, usually if I need them, I will build them myself and I'll show you that in a second. So what I'll do is I'll turn them off there. Hit F3 and I'll turn them off on that. And rather than having the software give you ISO curves um, by default, it's nice to actually extract them ourselves, um, depending on what we want to do. And so we can do that uh, by clicking on something and then going to the extract ISO curve command. And here, um, it's going to give me ISO curves in particular directions. So right now it's in the U direction. And I can switch that by going to the V and now they're going to be coming in this direction. Or I can um, go back and do both. And then as you click, it's actually going to build those ISO curves straight onto the surface. And then these become live curves that you can then manipulate. And you'll notice that it only works one surface at a time. Um, so if you want to match them, you can do that. But you'd have to go to the next, to the next surface and do them one at a time. Another thing that you can do, because the ISO curves um, tend to only move in sort of preset directions, you can actually draw on the surface by doing the interpolate on surface command. And that's going to be under this menu, and you'll see, you'll see it right here. Um, what it'll do is, uh, when you select that, it's going to ask you for the surface to draw on. And then here I've set up a number of points to click to, and I'm actually going to use those as reference points. And you can notice that what it's doing is it's actually keeping the curves on the surface as I'm doing this. So it's literally drawing on the surface. And it's actually a really useful tool, especially if you want to get into um, more complicated kinds of subdivisions in this case, say, a kind of grid pattern onto that surface, a kind of diamond pattern. Uh, another useful tool is contouring. What that's going to do is it's basically going to slice up a surface based on the direction that we set. So if we switch to, say, the side view, and if I draw a line straight up, and set a distance, we'll leave it at 0.5. It's going to go and it's going to slice them up that way. If I redo that, and then I go, say, right to left, let's change the distance to 0.25, and it's going to cut the surface that way, and it starts to look like a contour map. Um, similarly, section is um, something where you can cut sections through. It's not actually going to slice the object, it's just going to extract lines. So here I'm going to do them all from a common point. So it's a little bit like contour, except that you have a bit more control over the direction and spacing and so forth. Uh, bounding box is pretty straightforward, and what that's going to do is um, it's going to create a box that um, let's put this box on the on a transparent layer. And so what, the way I'll set the transparency of that layer by going in here, changing the transparency to say 50, and then this isn't going to the transparency isn't going to show up until I go and change to say a rendered view. But you can see how the bounding box is going to match the outer limits of the surface. And so if I do another bounding box on this component, 
you'll start to get something that's broken down into a series of kind of block elements. Uh, project can be quite handy, and what that will do is it will project curves or lines onto a surface. And so what you need to do is um, pre-select the lines that you want to project, and then choose a view that you want to project with. And as you type in project, uh, it's going to ask you for the surface to project onto. Here I'll give it a couple surfaces and hit enter. And then what you'll see is that it's actually going to take those and it's going to project them onto that surface depending on which view is active at the time. So again, it'll, it'll really matter on which view is active depending on which direction they project. Offset surface um, can be quite handy. Different than offset, make sure that you do offset surface. And then it'll give you a direction. You can flip it if you want to go in or out and then set a distance, so here it's set to 0.2. You'll see that it'll just project, it'll essentially offset that surface outward. If you want to make it a solid, uh, you can change it to solid, and then here we'll go to, like, say, 0.5, and then you'll actually get a thickened piece that's projected outward. And it figures out all the kind of complex edges needed to do that. Um, another interesting tool is to um, pull lines that are normal to a surface. So here I've got a few reference points set up. You can do that by going under here, and it's this command, line surface normal. So you select the surface, and then you choose the starting point of the line, and you'll notice that it comes out normal to that surface, meaning that it's coming out essentially perpendicular to the surface at that particular point. So this can be an interesting way to um, set up future geometries as well as analyze the surface that you have. Um, another handy command is to orient an object or a, or a surface onto another surface. So here I'll take this, type in orient on surface, and it's going to ask for um, a couple of reference points. In this case, I'll give it uh, the center and then an edge. And then it is asking me for the surface to orient onto. And then here, um, all I want to do is I want to copy these in this particular case. So I'll start to orient these onto the surface. And you'll notice that the, the orientation of this circle, this circular surface, is actually changing depending on where it is on the surface. So if I were to go and hide this, those become a kind of register of that particular surface. Um, smashing is essentially figuring out how to lay out uh, a warped or contoured surface, something that has a kind of double curvature to it. You can pre-select it, and you can actually um, bring along certain lines with it. So these lines are actually mapped onto this. If I take this, smash it, press Enter, it's going to put it back at the origin. If I turn the control points off on that, then you'll see that it's basically given me the flattened out version of that. Similar to that would be to unroll something, and that only works with developable surfaces meaning something that can be unrolled. So likewise, what I'll do is I'll take that, do an unroll surface, and then if I go back to the origin, I'll find that, bring it over, and that's going to be the flattened out version of this curled up piece.